when I did my first professional job on Broadway called First by about Jackie Robinson, First Black Ball Player. I digress. Who? <laughs> but, but you had to write your bio. I had no credits because it was my first professional job. And I do not remember writing this, but it, at one point you says, you know, David has, you know, he has an MFA from Yale. He's done uh, Wine in the Wilderness at the Lab Theater in Ann Arbor. And he has performed in comedy clubs all over this country, which was absolute bullshit. <laughs> I never, there, never are, are, there barely were comedy clubs at that point. But, they, but you know, 81, 80. Yeah, but the comedy boom had started. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Got and it. that was where the sexy shit was. And, and so then that became something. I, I think I want to try this. And so I just put it on my... I put on my bio. Damn it, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, I had no. I and had, you still didn't do stand up for a long time, right? No, because I was acting. And um, what happened was I met Robert Townsend. We did Soldier's Story together. Oh, he was in the movie, right? We shared a honey wagon. Now, you're a comic, so you you appreciate this. Robert and Denzel were really good friends, but. I thought Robert Townsend was the funniest, most brilliant person I'd ever seen. He came in, and we shared a honey wagon, which is like a half of a trailer. It's not even the size of this space. Right. So we were there together. And um, he was doing this material. He was doing Mo Money. He was doing all of And then at one point, I was like going, oh, my God. He has like 17 routine. I was just rolling. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's my friend, Damon. That's his That's his routine. Oh, he was doing other people. Yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. But, he yeah. Would, you know, he would claim it. He wasn't like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote that. Yeah. But still, and, and I was not of the comedy world. I was just amazed. I remember we, we, we drove on a day off uh, from Soldier Story. Robert and I, we drove. We were in Fort Smith, Arkansas. And 1983. So they changed the movies. There's one movie. Uh, movie theater they changed the movie once a month we were there for three and a half months we drove to tulsa i think as a road trip just to see movies you were shooting like on a barracks somewhere yes fort smith fort well, yeah fort smith Ar okay. arkansas fort chaffee that that's that's the name of the base that we were on while we were there robert says okay we're gonna go to this comedy club and see my friend larry miller and you know i'd seen bill cosby when i was 12 but to sit in that club half filled club and Larry, my experience then was like, how is he talking for an hour? Yeah. Like this shit is just falling out of his ass. There's no character. He's thinking it up on the spot. Like I didn't know the process. I just was amazed. Like, how yeah. can you do this? And it's funny and you're holding my attention. And then I, and then, you know, Robert was like, no, nah, that's his act. You know, he was like, what, the, what is your, what do you respect more at this point? Stand up or acting? It's not respect. It's how I define myself. Well, uh, okay. At the end of the day, I've always defined myself as an actor, personally. Right. I did stand up for a long time. I, quite as it's kept, I've quit stand up. But I, I kind of knew make, that. Yeah, I didn't make an announcement. Right. Um, I just because I felt I was done. David, we're all feeling it. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I mean, when you're in a club and you're like, ah, oh, my sciatica. Is crazy. Yeah. Guys, give it up for a side. Oh. No, yeah. I just felt like I didn't really have anything to say. Yeah. And, you know, I just wanted to do something else. But um, in that moment, though, back to the Larry Miller thing, this was a whole new terrain. I'd seen Richard Pryor, and Richard Pryor was like one of my major idols. Sure. But I never looked into the mechanics yeah. of stand up until I started doing it. And when I started doing it is because I would hang out with Keenan. Robert and those guys, uh, I was out here doing my first TV show like in 1985, 86, called All is Forgiven. And that was created uh, by the Charles Brothers, who just had done Cheers. Oh, wow. So I was at the Porsche dealership. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to be back in 10 days, man, because you know. Remember this face, shit. baby. Exactly. <laughs> I remember our premiere, I think it was behind Cheers, we pulled a 20 million, do 20 million viewership. Uh-huh. And the network was like, well, mm. Mm. I showed one of the I showed one of the producers on the Carmichael's the number, and he almost fainted. And still, they were like, we just saw you do a little bump. Mm. You didn't really go yep. up. You know, I'd never really done stand up. I I would do stand up to hang out with Robert and Keenan and those guys. Right. So I started doing spots. Okay, um, but just for fun. I'd really yeah. there's no longitudinal thinking. 
that I'm going to get on this TV show. It's going to feed my road work and I'm going to do a special. No, right. I just thought it's fun. Because after a certain point, Robert and those guys said, you can't just hang out with us in comedy clubs and observe. You have to do comedy. They actually said like, hey, they kind of intervened. Like, yes. this is enough. Yeah, you you're can't funny just, enough to do this. So either do it or even, leave. It wasn't even you're funny enough. Because it, it was, wasn't just you. The, it was also Eddie Murphy and Rock were yes, around too, right? Yes, so it was yeah. like. Well, Chris I'd met when I was in New York. Chris, I, I met him. What is the special Eddie did? And which, Uptown Comedy Express. Boom. I, 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 yes. I met him right around there. Yes. And I lived right around the corner from Catch a Rising Star. Okay. That was my yes. last shitty fucking horrible apartment I had in New York. So I knew Chris a long time. Um, Damon, anyway, Damon would go and do stand-up comedy. And I always looked down on it. You're in the saloon telling dick jokes. That's so sad. And he told me how much he made, which I think at the time was like. Tell you know, me more about this saloon. <laughs> yeah, he was making like 18000 25, yeah. something like that for yeah, two or for three days. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Literally within 30 days. Hello, D.C.? <laughs> you know? So I wrote my jokes up. I did my spots, and I got I got an agent, and I started going out, and that changed my career for years because that allowed me a cushion to say no. Like uh, I didn't have to play. Uh, what was this dude in this James Spader movie? It was Radio. Like, <laughs> it was worse. <laughs> the gay window dresser in Meshach mannequin. Taylor in mannequin. Type? Yeah, in yeah, mannequin. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember they called for that. And I, I didn't have to because right. I started doing comedy and that allowed me to go make yeah. this other money. Um, but I got burned out, man. I got burned out during in Living Color. I would take two weeks off, then I would tour all summer until and you're talking about like from probably May to August clubs some theaters mixed in grinding uh -huh. and i would take two weeks off at the end of summer and then i was back on the show so i did that for like three or four years and i just started getting burned out like i wasn't my income jumped but my happiness didn't yeah. jump it was just a grind man and what was what's your inner what is your inner life like what do people what are your loved ones what negative things do your loved ones say about you um, it was more or me. relationships. It was more me be because honest. it took a while for me to voice it because I was on a hit show. I was playing sold out clubs and stuff. Yep. I'd done Boomerang in 93. And I remember when I was heading to someplace like uh, Houston or something and my ticket sales just skyrocketed, you know, because Boomerang was a really big a movie. Huge movie. And all of that. But inside, I just was tired, you know? Yeah. You get on this plane, you get on this other plane, go to Milwaukee, go to the press, you know, or morning press. Yeah. It was fucking... Yeah. Yeah, man. So I was getting burned out. And um, like everybody, I wanted to do a huge fucking Born on the Fourth of July, uh, one-armed prison escapee crying, I'm my kid, I'm my kid, Johnny, you know, all that yeah. stuff. And that was, that's not what I was getting yet. So there was always more and, and always questioning. I don't, did not know in that moment if I was really going to get to the level that would shut me up. I don't think there is a level. Because well, yeah, that's what I wonder. I'm like, well, I'm trying to think of like, did you get to the level that would shut? No, you know, lead in a movie. I always said my goal was like to be three movies deep. That means you're doing a movie and it's a juicy fucking role. Right. You're going right into another movie that's another juicy fucking role, and you're in talks about being cast. Right. In a juicy you know, fucking so role. You're, yeah. You so you. Like, and then oh, and yeah. then you think about let's talk about how many people are living that life. Well, very Your few. very good friend Denzel. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But back then he was probably the only black dude. Then, you know, Wesley Snipes, you know, the guys who came yeah. up. But that's where I was then. Uh, and and I thought by the time I get to my age now, I thought I would be retired. I didn't think that there. We all thought you were. <laughs> but we. I didn't think people would really want me, you know. Well, it's I'm funny to explain right to. Now. I know. It's funny to explain to people how. Like comedians in their fifties, by this point, thirty years ago, were doing Westbury like venues you've never heard of. Like you're like your parents would go to Westbury Music Fair. Yeah, I Westbury Music Fair. Like yeah, 
and and like Cosby and Bob Newhart and all those guys w- and Don Rickles would be in that realm. That's but so now sad. like Dave, Chris, Kevin are doing arenas. Even Jim, like when Jim really blew up, I said, Jim, you should do a two day national tour. You should do one night in Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. Then you fly out and do one night Dodger in Dodger Stadium. Stadium. And of course, Jim was at the same. No, he says, no, I want to be Robert De Niro. Man, Why would I do that? <laughs> yeah, and I was like, oh, God, I don't understand this, dude. Well, again, that's like the disease of Moore and the disease of. I want to be Hamlet. Everybody. Right. Did you and did you ever did you reckon with it? Did you get to a point where you're like, all right, I have to. This is making me miserable. This it didn't ambition. make me that miserable because, like I said, I always worked. I always made money. Now, I didn't have a $40 million deal at Netflix, but, right. you know, I was flush. I bought a house. Yeah. I had a nice life, you know. Yeah. Um, so, also, there was no other avenue where I said, you know what? I'm going to bag groceries at Ralph's because it's more spiritual. No. I mean, this is what it was. And I figured I'd be retired. I did not t- take into account you know, at my age, I've done my 10,000 hours. I actually know who the fuck I am. I'm who, a, who? Who are you? I'm an actor, man. I'm really comfortable. I'm a dad. Um, I'm an accomplished performer. Hey, did you like that? Did you like that? Yeah, did you like it, though? You want more? Don't want to work? Would rather watch videos of me grab assing with people? First of all, go up here to subscribe. And then go up here to uh, watch more clips. This is like when the weatherman says that there's a high pressure system coming in. Although I'm not really used to the green screen.